Now I want to look at the 3D model. If we zoom in here, we can see that that curb is extending through the width where the driveway will be. I want to taper this uh, and decrease it from its existing height to something a little bit shorter. So I want to look at one thing here in the template before we do this. I'm going to make use of a parametric constraint. And the parametric constraint is going to be on this point here. Let's look at the point properties. So I'm going to double click on it to pull up the point properties. We can see a couple constraints here. The one that I'm focused on is the vertical constraint. Uh, we can see that it is half of a foot above the curb face, which is this point here. So that's its existing height, and we have a constraint here. These labels here are what we call our parametric constraint labels. So I have a curb height parametric constraint label, and this is going to be something that we are going to point out as I create a parametric constraint. So I'm going to use the parametric constraint command. I'll locate my corridor. And I'm going to data point right to that point, and my endpoint will be right here. And there is the constraint label that we mentioned before. This is the one that I want to use. So I'm going to click to accept that. The start value is going to be half of a foot. I want to taper it down to one inch. So to do that, I can key in a value. Uh, in this case, it accepts fractions. So I'm going to put. 1 over 12, which would signify 1 inch data point to accept that. And we see here in the 3D model that it has tapered down from 6 inches to 1 inch, exactly as we want it to do. Next, I want to modify that height all the way across here and make it 1 inch as well. So it's going to kind of mirror what's happening on this side. I'll use the same command to do that. Locate the corridor. This time, we'll snap to this construction line and this construction line to stop. Using the same label, this time we're going to start with one inch. I'm going to hit enter on my keyboard to lock that in. It changes it to the decimal value. I'll accept that and do the same over here. Accept that as well. There we can see that it modified the curb height as we desired. And now we can look at doing the same on this particular region. But since it's the same exact workflow, we'll omit those steps. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and share it with others. If you want to see more like it, please consider subscribing to this and Bentley's other channels. Thank you and see you next time.